This is part 26 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss view model in ASP.NET Core MVC with an example. In some cases, a model object may not contain all the data a view needs. This is when we create a view model. A view model contains all the data a view needs. Let's understand this with an example. Notice the code that we have in the details action method of our home controller. At the moment, we are passing two pieces of data from our details action method to the details view. To pass employee data, we are using the employee model object and to pass page title, we are using view bag. Using view bag creates a loosely typed view and as a result, will not have IntelliSense and compile time error checking. Including this page title property in the employee class does not make any sense because the employee class must only contain employee related properties. This is when we create a separate class that contains all the data our details view need. This class is called a view model. View models can live anywhere in your ASP.NET Core MVC project, but to keep things better organized, we usually place them in a folder that is named view models. So in the root project folder, I'm going to add a new folder. Let's name it view models. In this folder, I'm going to add a new class file. Let's name it home details view model. Home because the name of the controller is home controller. Details because the name of the action method is details. It's a view model, hence the suffix view model. This view model class is going to contain all the data our details view needs. In general, we use view models to shuttle data between a controller and a view. For this reason, view models are also called data transfer objects or DTO in short. First, let's include a property for employee details. The property is of type employee and we know the employee class is an employee management dot models namespace. So let's bring that namespace in. And let's also name the property employee. We also want a property for page title. Page title is of type string and let's name the property page title. We can now use this home details view model class to pass data from a home controller to the details view. So in the details action method, let's create an instance of home details view model class. We know this class is in employee management dot view models namespace. So let's bring that namespace in. Let's also name the variable home details view model with a lowercase h. We know this class has got employee property, so let's use it to pass employee details. It also has page title property. Let's use it to pass page title. Page title is employee details. And then to the view method, we pass our view model instance. At this point, let's run our project and see what happens. Now let's navigate to slash home slash details. Notice we have an error. The model item that is passed is of type home details view model, but this requires a model of type employee. Why do we have this error? Well, if we take a look at our details view, notice we have set the model to be of type employee. But at the moment, from our details action method, we are passing an instance of home details view model. So we have to change the model here to our home details view model. That class is in view models namespace. Notice with this change in place, we have a red squiggly here. That's because on the model object, we don't have name property. Instead, we have the employee property and on that, we have the name property. Let's do the same change right here as well for the email and finally for the department. At the moment, we are still using view bag for page title. We don't have to do that anymore because our view model carries page title. Notice when I type at model and dot, we see page title property. With this change in place, let's reload our web page. Notice we see both the page title and employee details as expected. We create a view model when a model object does not contain all the data a view needs. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.